The LG 1156 socket was the starting point for Intel's core series of CPUs, delivering a lot of innovations, but also relying a lot on this previous 775 socket, while switching completely to DDR3 RAM and introducing us to the Intel HD graphics family found in their CPUs instead of the motherboards, as it used to be with the 775 socket. A whole lot of other changes happened as well, with the introduction of USB 3 and SATA 3. The new socket seemed to be a lot more modern than the previous one. Today, we are looking at what was the first ever Core i5, the i5-750. Originally, this CPU was meant for servers, hence why many compare it to the Xeon X3430, pretty much the same chip. Spec-wise, the i5-750 features 4 cores and 4 threads, clocked at 2.6 GHz, which can be easily increased with a simple overclock. But you should definitely keep in mind that the TDP is 95 watts. This means that the chip can get very hot, as it can be usual for these old CPUs to get quite hot, even at stock speeds. Speaking of overclocking, by setting the multiplier to 20 and voltage to 1.3, we're getting a stable overclock of 3.2 GHz. This improves our multi-core score in Cinebench by around 90 points, pushing the score to a somewhat ironic 750 points. It's still far away from a second-gen i5, but it surpassed the AMD's Atom 200 GE, and it was just one point shy from one of the strongest i3 from the fourth generation. The single-core test remained the same, where the i5-750 only beats its predecessor from the LJ-775 SOC in form of the legendary Q6600 and the $1000 server CPU from the LJ-1366 SOC in form of the X5650. But now, with the synthetic benchmarks out of the way, let's jump into some gaming. First on the benchmark list is Overwatch 2, and until the game loaded up properly, it was a real stutter fest, but after some time, it managed to stabilize and deliver some decent frame rates. Obviously, the CPU is at a constant 100% of usage, and from my experience, the RX 70 can deliver 3-digit frame rates in this game, so it's safe to say that the i5 is holding back the GPU quite a bit, but if we don't consider the initial stutters, overall, it's not a terrible experience. Elden Ring tends to put a lot of stress on the CPU, and the i5-750 is no exception to that, delivering just about playable FPS, with some big dips into the 20s. Still, these results are much better and more pleasant than any second or third generation i3, most probably down to the proper 4 cores this i5 has. The game doesn't really like dual cores that much. To be honest, I don't really think many would enjoy this kind of performance that much. But overall, the CPU is just good enough for delivering 30 FPS, you got to keep in mind that it's 13 years old. The results here are somewhat impressive. Another chaotic experience was the Resident Evil 4 remake. In some areas, the game's frame rate was decent. In others, it was a real mess. Although the CPU was constantly pushed to the limits with a close to 100% usage, it seems like the frame rate and FPS scales gets going once the CPU needs to load up new textures and environments, putting some more stress to the CPU. But once again, not a terrible experience from an ancient CPU. Speaking of terrible experiences, the remastered version of The Witcher 3 was one to forget for the i5-750. The game was really a stutter fest, kind of like Overwatch, but it never really stabilized jumping all over the place. I'm not quite sure what was going on here. Maybe the engine of the game doesn't really like this CPU that much. After all, the minimum specs for the remastered state at least an i5-2500K, much better CPU in so many regards. I did not get to test the original version, but I am sure that would fare a lot better. Getting back to better experiences, Cyberpunk 2077 certainly doesn't have the best frame times. The i5-750 seems to be just good enough to support the RX 57, indicating that we might have ran into a small bottleneck, which I honestly never expected to happen with a first generation i5, especially considering that we are running one of the most demanding games of recent times. Might be that the latest 1.6.3 version helps out here, surely the original release wouldn't do as well. To finish it all off with another CPU killer, the Mafia remake ran almost perfectly with the i5-750, minus some frame dips and slowdowns. All the usual stuff when using such an old CPU. Despite all the struggles, the game felt playable, as visible by the footage. Once again, it's better than any second, third or fourth gen i3. No surprise when we see almost constant CPU usage close to 100%. That's usually the case with all CPUs that have 4 cores or less these days. Not quite sure what to say about the i5-750, 
didn't do a bad job of handling some of the more demanding titles, offering some more consistent results than even AMD's newer FX CPUs that sell for more on the used market. Being available for pocket change money on sites like AliExpress may be tempting if you already have an 1156 board and maybe you have a younger kid and you want to build a decent gaming PC for older titles on a very narrow budget, then the i5-750 is a pretty viable option, but not really a good choice for modern gaming. In my opinion, the real stars of the socket 1156 may be the i7s, a bit more expensive, but with 4 cores and 8 threads, it will be interesting to see what one of these can offer in 2023, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for joining me on the CPU review. Make sure to subscribe. Do not miss out once I get my hands on my first gen i7.